reality. And then in the other state, in a fearful state, everything is fragmented, seen through boxes and compartments and levels, where levels such as emotions and behaviors and thoughts are all different and autonomous, right? See how fragmented it is? See, there's no spontaneity. There's no, there's no spirit in that. Spirit wouldn't guide me through pain to go to joy. It instantly brings it, you into it. It's bringing you into joy, and it's the ego's interpretation that is painful. You see? So the consequence of listening to the ego is pain. The consequence of listening to the Holy Spirit is joy. And it, the Spirit doesn't wouldn't guide you into situations that are difficult, that you know in advance are difficult, just to... Teach what is something. difficult? Well, for example, if I find it, to use yesterday the example with the shoes, I find it difficult to go into situations where I have to face people when I'm feeling guilty. So it wouldn't put me into that situation to go through it and somehow feel joyful. The, the spirit is very graceful. Mm -hmm. The spirit does not force you to do things so you can see things. It knows the contrast. The, the, the teaching is in the contrast. And it's all thought. So it's, you got there in your right mind the thought, the thought of God, the Holy Spirit is the right mind, or you're either in the wrong mind, which is the ego, and you will experience fear or love or pain or joy in those. So, the Holy Spirit is just calling you into joy. And if there's pain in awareness, then it's just the ego's interpretation. That's like, coming here, you think, wow, this is such great. I'm going in my purpose. I'm going deep. And from a, you know, from a very naive point of view, you would say, oh, right, it's just happy and it's all perfect. And, right? Yeah. And then the stuff starts coming up and what happens? immediately there's, there's all this darkness which which is unnecessary because the ego is judging what's coming up so there's like a second layer of judgments on top of of the watching the ego is watching but to look at your mind you're going to have to go through the darkness to go through the light so you just have to keep things in mind in context that I'm waking up from a dream and I'm going to be slowly brought in. It can't be thrust upon me. And why need the darkness take more than a second? Why does it seem to take days or hours or something like that? If That's just the way it seems to be. It's processed until it's an instant. So there's nothing you can do to accelerate that going through the darkness. Like when I'm in it. Follow your prompts. It feels like why do I have to sit here in this darkness, you know? Well... That's, again, you just have to see that as things are not as they appear. Just don't judge why do I have to sit here in this darkness. Be grateful that the darkness is being removed from your mind. This question of why is not profitable. Is not profitable. What can I do to help this speed up is not judge it. It was like, you were telling me, you know, when I feel really deep, when I'm waking up in sleep, I feel this kind of heaviness or whatever, just to allow it, not judge it. Well, normally I'd be like, okay, why is it like this? How do I stop it? How do I get it? Okay. And then yesterday morning, I was like, let's just, let's just see if it's okay. And the instant I did that, there was like this full of energy and I just got right out of it. Because <laughs> <laughs> you just let things be as they are, instead of judging and breaking them apart and fragmenting them. So then... Next time I try to let things be and that doesn't work, you just got to actually let it be. Just let it be. It's just, again, it comes back to humbleness. I'm waking up from a dream of perception. It was made, not created, so there's nothing to feel guilty over. And you need to look at the ego and how it compares and fragments and judges things. And you just need to withdraw allegiance to the ego. Because you, your power of your mind is in the ego. And you need to be convinced by the miracle. Otherwise, you need to be convinced because you have so much faith in it. That's all you know. 
And it's not even real knowing. That's why it's so shaky. That's the art. It's just intuitive. And it's never about right and wrong. And if someone does seem to say you've done something wrong, then you just have to go in your mind and forgive it. Take it in as a claim and say, that's not true. I'm... Early in my awakening, when I was following my prompts, and I was teaching up in Ontario, uh, the biological sister, Jody tried to make me wrong because I never came by. But I wasn't guided, and I was very honest. Am I guided to go there? No, do not go there. I don't go against my prompts. So I was told I was wrong, I wasn't a good brother, and all these things. So I took it in my mind and said, okay, well, I don't have to adhere to those concepts and images. Those are just unreal thoughts. And I blessed my sister, and that was it. You see? No one can make you feel guilty. No one can make you feel... It's all a decision in your mind. You just had to be determined to see things differently. And you can't be you can't be determined if you're determined to destroy your mind watching. You know, you can be the ego has a version of that determinism too. Yeah, I'm gonna get in here on a witch hunt, I'm gonna dig, I'm gonna get totally look in my mind, we get rid of this ego, and someone comes along and they're trying to join with you, and you're just off into, like, you're just totally whacked out of it in your mind. Oh my god. But this is what happens to people in the awakening, if they're not centered in the context of awakening. You know what I mean when I say that? The context is, I am awakening from a dream, a perception, I'm being slowly awakened into my mind. Yes, the immediacy of salvation is now, but I'm fearful. How do I know? My resistance reflects what I believe. So I'm afraid of love. I'm afraid of love. So I need to be convinced through the miracle. I need all the lacks of love to be collapsed, and in that, love is restored. So there is no rate of awakening. It's highly individualized. Yeah, and it's always the instant anyway. And the part that's being undone is not real. So it's not like, Jason, you're becoming more enlightened. Yeah. You're atoning. You're undoing, Jason. You're awakening to what is already established, what is reality. So you never have thoughts that Jason isn't unraveling the bar, ball of yarn fast enough or things nope. like that? Nope, never. It's so, already done. Yeah. I see that you believe in the ego, but that doesn't make it real. So what really needs to be undone? And so the reason we're together is just you're just following it. prompts. I'm following prompts. It's yeah. not about trying to make it have how it fast. We're not doing that. anything here. <laughs> but you can say in following the prompts, the Holy Spirit uses everything in, in the most constructive sense. So everything is used for the higher good and purpose. Everything everything gets used to point to reality. It's not special. It just gets pointed. So the body of Jeffrey, all these things, this room, Teach Only Love Sanctuary, right here, all these symbols, the picture of Jesus on the wall, and our movie collection, all of it, all these things are just representative of God. Look, it's God. So when we join together, we watch movies, we look at how we feel, right? We, we get excited when we watch the, when, when the Holy Spirit has a wonderful message for us and we just rejoice in it. That's it. It just looks however it looks. There's no model, there's no cookie cutter approach. It just is what it is. Teach Only Love Sanctuary is not a real sanctuary. It's just representative of the mind. So, you you know, it's just symbolic of the mind, of the altar that is cleared. That's it. So the purpose of this symbol will reflect, you know, the, the altar, not a defiled altar. That's it. So even the idea that certain shows are more helpful than others, that's not really... No. They're all... 
there's no good or bad TV, there's no good or bad movies, there's no... Everything works together for good. Yeah, because I keep thinking, oh, this one's probably a waste because it's not metaphysical, or it's not drawing any feelings out of me, or whatever. Right. Yeah. There's nothing to get. A lot of spiritual seekers go in and they go, yeah, I didn't get anything from that movie. Why are you going in to get something? See, that's the seeker. It's going in for an entertainment. It needs to be entertained. Either spiritually entertained or not. You go because you're guided to go, and then whatever is there you watch. If there's something that comes up, you, you look at that with the Holy Spirit. That's, that's, and that's for everything that you do. That's everything you do. You know? Just be honest with yourself. And there's never a reason to feel guilty. If you catch yourself, so to speak, just it's your call for love. Just remind yourself, oh, yes, I'm, I'm calling this person right now, and I'm lonely, and I just want to connect with them because I, feel, I don't feel alone when I'm talking to them. And that would be, that's misusing, that's misusing there. And that's where the guilt comes from, because the guilt made an idol. And now it's attempting to get salvation from an image. So the image falls away. Oh, I'm alone. So then the mind believes that the image or thought form image is causative. So it picks up the phone, think, which is a cause and effect relationship. Spurious. It's not a real cause and effect, but it's the ego's version of cause and effect. Picks up the phone, calls someone. Oh, see that? There's all time involved in that. I feel better now. I'm talking to you. There's a false cause and effect relationship there. When the phone falls away or the person falls away, the loneliness is still there. You see? So your purpose is to expose that. It doesn't mean you're not going to call someone. It just means that you're going to be very purposeful in what you do. So the actions will flow from your thoughts. Behaviors flow from thoughts. Behavior is a reflection of your thinking. So don't change your behavior, change your thoughts. And you can't change your mind when you believe in right and wrong behaviors. It's level confusion. You can only change your mind or change your behavior, right, when you change your thoughts. And you can't change your thoughts when you believe in good and bad. So you see... Once you pull the, the, the complication out of the way, the ego, then you can see. Then you can watch. You can be left alone with your thought and see it in your awareness. Instead of hiding or resisting, you're able to look more directly at what you're doing. And then that's where your joy comes from. Because when you learn to be truly alone, you are all one. You start to feel naked. You start to feel connected. But you must go through that first. Actually, the ego teaches you that by seeking outside of yourself will get you satisfaction, will soothe your loneliness, will soothe the separation. But it's learning to be alone that connects you to God. And I don't mean alone in the body. I mean just totally naked and not dependent on other people's opinions and decisions, totally following the prompts of, your, of the spirit, totally looking at your mind, totally observing, looking at the ego and seeing its falsity, seeing its games as trickery, without any judgment whatsoever, learning to look without any movement, just a simple watching, and then the body gets used through the watching, the body of Jason, the body of Jeffrey, gets used through the watching. And then all these previous things that I did before, calling people because I was afraid, or I was afraid of the stillness, all these things start to fall away. And then what I was looking for outside of me is given from my looking within. So what I was looking for outside, I was looking for salvation. Salvation comes from looking within. So salvation is born 
within me through the simple watching 